Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We'll start things out with AMD's Vega, specifically the fact that we won't be seeing large numbers of the cards and store shelves until at least October because of shortages of parts. We'll go into that in a minute. Then move over to NVIDIA and the Volta architecture, because news is popping up that we may actually see these cards for the GeForce lineup, in other words, for gamers in the first quarter of 2018 then it's Camp Intel with Coffee Lake the 8700K has waved to us from afar on the Sysoft Sander da uh, database and we also have some other benchmarks for that as well and then we're going to finish things off with the Xbox One X because Microsoft are telling us it's breaking their previous pre-order records with the other older Xboxes in other words this is the fastest pre-ordered Xbox ever but, as I said, first things first, RX Vega. So, not getting into the performance of the card for a minute and just talking about the sheer launch fiasco, I think no one could disagree that this has been an absolute mess. And uh, I think some of it is definitely retailers are to blame. Some of it is possibly miners. And I do believe some of it is what we're going to be discussing now and that is part shortages so this comes to us from digi times because they have sources which are alleging that well we won't be seeing rx vega at least at large quantities and at normal price until possibly october or maybe even later now why is this well the problem allegedly and obviously we don't know if it's 100 percent true but allegedly is the complexity of the chip itself and it also may be an issue with the advanced semiconductor engineering package technology. Too long, didn't read. There is an awful lot of problems in terms of the yield, at least according to this information, when it comes to integration, integrating excuse me, the HBM2 memory and possibly even the manufacturing of the processor itself, the GPU itself. Honestly, this card is obviously a very complex to design, just like any uh, modern day graphics card, but the fact that they've got that HBM2 in there and the fact that they're obviously trying to produce these at large quantities, I wouldn't be surprised in the least if this is at least partly to do with the issue. And honestly, I don't think it's one thing at this point. I think it's like a multiple... Um, I guess the best way of describing it is domino effect. I think one thing is affecting one thing and then you've got the pricing on top of that. You've got people who of course were early adopters trying to snap up the cards. And you've got AMD's fairly baffling decision when it comes to their Radeon packs as well, which has also kind of led to some issues. It's just a bit messy, quite honestly. And it, it looks like we're gonna have to wait at least a couple of months post-launch to actually get these cards in any sufficient quantity and that's not particularly good news for AMD or for people who are once again invested in AMD's ecosystem for example let's say you've got a fairly nice 1440p FreeSync monitor yeah okay some folks might tell you just forget it just go with like a GTX 1080 for the sake of argument well that's nice but obviously then you're not getting FreeSync and that isn't ideal if you've just recently plonked down money, or even a year or so ago, plonked down money on a AMD FreeSync monitor. And of course, the reverse could be said for NVIDIA as well. If uh, AMD came out with a better card or uh, an alternative card to NVIDIA and you need to change ecosystems, and it's one problem with FreeSync and G-Sync, which I've said about a couple of times uh, before. Another thing actually on this article is, well, I'll read this out verbatim. With the challenges from Vega GPUs not being as expected, NVIDIA is also not in a rush to begin mass producing shipments for its Volta-based GPUs at end of 2017, and has rescheduled them for the first quarter of 2018 based on Vega's status, according to industry sources. There's a couple of things. One, you might say, well, Jensen himself has said that Pascal um, is going to have to do us for now because, well, essentially, Volta is just too expensive to produce, and this is certainly the case. Although many are saying that it's going to be the second half of 2018. As I mentioned in just yesterday's video, so I'm going to quickly go over this um, rather than kind of take up too much video time. But in my opinion, there's a couple of options we've got. The first at this point is a Pascal refresh. But if it takes much longer, we're going to start getting to the very last months of uh, 2017. And I don't know if uh, NVIDIA would want to release it, let's say, in very late 
November onwards because it probably wouldn't really do too well for their financial quarter. The second thing is they could, of course, release it next year, but let's say they were to release the Pascal refresh in, I don't know, late February. Well, it won't be long, surely after that, until we're going to see Volta, but if they were to push Volta back possibly another six months, let's say they don't release Volta until like November-ish 2018, that's not ideal for customers either because that's stagnation in the in the GPU market. So let's just hope that NVIDIA just says, okay, you know what, we're just going to forget a Volta refresh, we're just going to wait, I'm um, sorry, a Pascal refresh and we're just going to jump straight to Volta and um, you know, we'll just release that as soon as possible. Okay, so moving on to Intel and the i7-8700K. So we actually have a couple of results from Sysoft's Sandra, but perhaps more tellingly than all, we also have uh, this appearing on an ASRock Z370 Pro 4 motherboard, and this is almost certainly not an engineering sample as well. It reinforces the specifications we've known about for some time, so nothing particularly new here. Of course, we see um, 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache per core. We see 12 megabytes of level 3 cache. And finally, a boost speed, or a turbo speed if you prefer, of 4.3 gigahertz with a base of 3.7. Rather interestingly, there's also some benchmarks of Cinebench, which popped up a while ago actually, and I kind of missed them. Now, Cinebench naturally is spread over multiple different versions. We've got R11.5 and also R15. And furthermore, they're segmented into both a single and multi-core scores. What's the result? Well, about 8% slower, the 7700K is, than the 8800K in single thread performance. But with multi-core, we're looking at about 35% difference between the two processors. Now, it is imperative to know that, from what I understand, these results are a little bit older. So it is possible, it is possible, not 100%, that BIOSes or the actual CPU itself wasn't 100% finished with these particular results. Therefore, you perhaps shouldn't give them full credit of being 100% accurate, but still, at least it's some insight to say, hey, Yes, the 8700K is going to perform better in single thread performance and multi thread performance is not surprising because obviously it does have those additional processor cores. So it beating out a 7700K is a bit like, well, pretty obvious. And now we're going to finish off with Microsoft Project Scorpio Edition Xbox One X because it is actually the fastest pre ordered console from Xbox ever. In fact, according to Microsoft's own blog, I'll read this out verbatim, within just a few days we saw record-setting sellout times and are currently sold out in many countries around the world. You, our biggest fans, have pre-ordered more Xbox One X Project Scorpio edition consoles in the first five days than any Xbox ever. And indeed, it did seem to do fairly well on Amazon. It was absolutely destroying the charts. We've seen, of course, many people say that they were having difficulties pre-ordering the system. And at this point, if you do want a Project Scorpio edition, uh, you're pretty much out of luck. The only thing I can suggest is eBay. And good luck getting one anywhere near the RRP when these things launch. I think people are obviously, in some instances, they've done a lot of price gouging and, I'm um, sorry, a lot of scalping. And then, of course, that will lead to price gouging. However, if you're not too bothered about the Project Scorpio sticker and the other small details, for example, the free stand, and you're just like, okay, you know what, I just want the system, when can I do that? Well, according to Microsoft, you won't need to wait long. By next month, they're going to give you more information on how to order and what the order pre-order procedures are going to be for the Xbox One X. And of course, they're doing their darndest to make sure that they've manufactured enough of consoles to meet demand. Now, this is a very slight aside, and yes, I'm probably going to get some flack for this, but this is very contrary to what's um, happening, of course, with Nintendo and the whole mini consoles, where, yes, we've seen this whole debacle once again for the SNES Mini. To be honest, I, I literally didn't even try to pre-order one. I just like, you know what? If by some miracle I happen to see one in a store, I'll buy it. 
but I'm I refuse to just go online trying to check various retailers and look for stock because I just knew it was going to sell out and of course it did and it, it just baffles me and I'm probably going to be ranting a little bit here but it just baffles me that this happens with Nintendo I can actually understand companies when they do a small um, artificial limitation of stock because it builds hype, it builds excitement. I don't like it as a customer. I don't think it's very consumer friendly, but okay, I can understand it from a logical point of view, from a marketing point of view. But it's not even that I'm mad at Nintendo, that's the thing, because I, I, it just doesn't bother me. Like, if I wanted to play one of these games at this point, I'll either just buy a, reg, uh, a standard, you know, SNES, or I'll just emulate the damn thing because it's just. It just baffles me. I, I don't understand. It's like to have a crippling fear of money and success when it comes to this stuff. They could they could easily like have an artificial limitation on stock, then tell people, hey, you know what, we misjudged demand, which of course would be BS, but whatever. You know, we misjudged demand. Give us a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, and it will be on store shelves. We promise there will be enough. Just don't don't give in to scalpers. Don't give in to, you know, the eBay's. And then People would be happy. People would be like, okay. But it's happened again. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I, I, okay, first of all, maybe I could slightly buy it with the NES Classic. Maybe, maybe, maybe you could say, okay, maybe they misjudged demand. But it's happened again with the SNES Classic. And there's no way that they could think, eh, it's not going to sell as well as the NES Classic. There's no way with the collection of games that it actually had on the system. And this isn't a Nintendo bashing video so much as I don't, I really don't understand their, their story, why they're doing that. It, it just baffles me. I would love for someone to kind of tell me their logic, whether it's something that they have in terms of the company, whether they feel that it's it, um, increasing their, uh, their brand recognition or whether it makes them feel more lofty or perhaps more exclusive I don't know I'd love for someone to tell me what the logic is behind this because it's really confusing and it does actually kind of remind me that even back in the days of the N64 like the PlayStation which of course was incredibly successful back in the day the Sega Saturn which didn't do as well as the PlayStation admittedly but it wasn't that far off of the N64 pretty easy to buy those systems even the PlayStation at launch even when it was doing really well when even a bit later after launch, when Final Fantasy VII and all these games were coming out, it wasn't that bad to buy a PlayStation. Where on the other hand, the N64 had shortages, and it was just a bit weird. So, I don't know, why Nintendo does some of this stuff is kind of baffling to me. So, I'm glad that Microsoft did do well with the pre-orders of the Scorpio uh, edition. I think it looks really nice, I have to admit. I do really like the look of the Xbox One X. And to be fair to Sony, even... and I'm, Yeah, I'm ranting again, I'm sorry. But even Sony with the PlayStation 4 and the PS4 Pro, yes, there were problems buying the PS4, but not to nowhere near the extent of the Switch. It's just, it's just weird. I don't know. I, I really want Nintendo to stop doing that so we can enjoy their games, because that ultimately is what I want. You know, I'm a gamer and a tech head. That's kind of my thing. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Sorry for getting a bit ranty at the end. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.